Hey everyone, I thought we could do a little mailbag Q&A uh, video. I have a couple questions that were both asked on Twitter or YouTube, so let's get to it. All right, how old were you when you came to the States? Um, so for those who you don't know, and the reason you were wondering if I have a bit of an accent is I do. I am originally from Quito, Ecuador, and I first came to the US when I was 17 to go to school. I went to school at Notre Dame, and then I lived in Indiana for a couple years, and then I moved to Chicago, which is where I live now. Besides snakes, what is your favorite creature subtype? Uh, please don't say cat snakes. Um, it probably has to be vampires. Um, I started playing magic. When I learned how to play magic, I started playing with a, a mono black vampire sec, and it was real janky. I had like cool dress vampires and like vampire lacerators, and I had a Sengir vampire, and it was like the coolest card I'd ever seen. Um, so there's definitely like a very soft spot in my heart for vampires. I've, I've always really liked the tribe. Uh, Aberdasher asks, how to decide to venture off from your current role? Example, decision to become a magic procaster, but he also refers to streaming here. Um, so for those of you who don't know, I used to work in media. I co-founded a company called Dose.com. You can still see that online um, to pursue full-time magic streaming and um, doing coverage. Coverage less so nowadays, mostly um, streaming full-time. And that was a very difficult decision, um, but I had been doing my previous role for about eight plus years, and I definitely was feeling like I was wanting a new kind of challenge or a different a change of pace in particular. Um, at my last role, I was working a very managerial role. It felt very different than what I was doing when the company was originally started because back then I wore a lot of different hats. I had a lot of different responsibilities, and at many startups, you kind of have to get used to do a lot of different things and um, make sure the ball isn't getting dropped in a lot of different areas, which is very different from the path that where I was uh, at the time that I decided to make a career switch. Um, I was ma mostly managing people. I love streaming. I think it's like marries two of the things that I like the most, which is interacting with people, interacting with my community in particular. But even before there was a community, it's just interacting with friends when you're playing games. And the second thing is gaming. And I've been a gamer all my life. I love games. So uh, being able to mix those two was amazing. Um, so at the time that I made that, that switch, uh, the time was right and I had been doing it for long enough and I felt financially secure enough um, to actually pursue full-time streaming. What has magic taught you about life and what has life taught you about magic? Um, magic has taught me about life so that it's good not to tilt off. I think it's really easy for you in a game of magic to like misplay and tilt off and then you continue to make all these mistakes and it, within the game because you're like, oh man, I like, I played the land post combat after I got dazed or four spiked or something like this is so embarrassing and people end up doing a worse play uh, because they want to like hide the fact that they like clearly punted. And I think it cuts both ways. I think the same is true in life. I think once you've made a mistake, whether it be in a game of magic or you've had the mistake happen in life, there's no reason to make two mistakes in a row because you've already made the first mistake, right? Once the first punt or mistake has happened, that's the world you live in now. You don't get to go back. You don't really get to change it. The mistake is there and it's happened. So it's what you do from that point forth that actually determines the outcome of the end, whether it be whether you lost the game or magic or not, or you actually like were able to dig yourself out of this problem that you got into because you punted in real life. So I think it's been very true um, both ways. Synthetica asks, uh, what's the coolest thing that traveling magic has allowed you to see? Um, I would say that that ha definitely has to be going to Japan for um, the Pro Tour. Uh, Japan, I think, is just one of the coolest countries, like one of the most different countries in the whole wide world. Uh, it doesn't feel like, when I've gone to Europe, for example, it's like, well, yeah, this is very different than the US, but it doesn't feel that different. Being in Japan felt like being in a completely different world. and. Within Japan, I got to see a lot of really awesome things like being in Tokyo, being in Kyoto, being in Nara, like being in a lot of different cities in Japan and getting to experience the culture and getting to vlog all of it. I have a vlog of it if you actually want to check that out. Was just truly incredible and one of the like cool experiences. I think second to that was probably Hawaii, but that's only because Hawaii is like a great vacation place, right? So like who doesn't want to go snorkel in Hawaii? Like that was pretty cool, but it doesn't really compare um, to going to Japan.
Danny Jackson asks, uh, what was the first rare you ever pulled? So I actually distinctly remember this because it was at my very first FNM. It was Avacyn Restored, which I chose at the wrong time to get into magic. I, I just missed Innistrad and also joined an Avacyn Restored door, so they... Um, I lost my first draw, so I drafted a super garbage deck. Um, I drafted this card called Arcane Melee. I, I forget exactly what it does. Cause, like I said, I was so new to the game. Like this is the first time I'd ever seen this card, but it's like, it's like an enchantment that makes it's really expensive. <laughs> it's like four or five mana, and it makes spells cost one less to cast. But it's it's a global thing. Like it affects you and your opponent, and I had no idea. So. I remember when I was drafting, I was getting past cards, and then somebody passed me Arcane Millie, like, seventh pick, and I was like, oh my god, there's this cool rare. Like, I, I had just learned about rarity in cards, I was like, this is so cool, I got past this cool rare. Wow, like, I'm gonna wreck these nerds, they don't know how good my deck's gonna be, and obviously my deck was just hot garbage. So, I lost round one, then round two, uh... I got paired up against somebody who had to leave the LGS before the third round, so they beat me, like, completely, and then they say, uh, well, I'm also heading out, so I'm just gonna give you the win, so you get to play somebody, like, you don't, you don't get the buy in, in the last round, and I did actually get the buy in the last round, so I ended up going 2-1 and got, like, one of those, like, booster packs that you get for, like, not doing too bad, which, even though, like, I had not won a single <laughs> round that night, and I cracked it open, and it was a bonfire of the damn, so... Not only was it a rare, it was a, a very cool splashy mythic at the time, and it was quite expensive back then too. Uh, so that's all the questions that I had for this one. If you have other questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll do another one of these soon. I'll just cherry pick stuff. I'll also ask on Twitter, so if you want to uh, follow me on Twitter, that's twitter.com slash gabbysparts. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, make sure you to thumbs up and subscribe. Um, typically on this channel, I have more like gameplay. I have draft videos and constructed videos and stuff, but... I am planning on uploading more of this kind of stuff. Um, I like to sit and talk with, with you, so it's been pretty fun so far. Thanks again for watching YouTube, and I will see you later.